Hello everyone and welcome to Cinderful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting out war against the grey. Today's video we're going to talk getting started with Warhammer 40k Boarding Patrol, the brand new way to play Warhammer 40k coming out alongside Arcs of Omen. Now in this video we're going to take a look at the Adeptus Sororitas, we're going to go through how you muster a Boarding Patrol specifically for the Adeptus Sororitas, and any rules adaptions that the army may have as well. We'll then look at a couple of units we recommend to grab first to start your boarding patrol force before looking at some other units to expand upon after those first couple of initial pieces. We'll then show you a sample army list at the end of the video of 500 points, the perfect size for a boarding patrol force, for you to use hopefully as some inspiration for starting your own boarding patrol army for the Adeptus Sororitas. So with that all said, let's talk about mustering a boarding patrol. Obviously, we have the standard boarding patrol uh, force organization chart which allows for one hq three troops three elites now there are every army has their own way in which they modify this some more than others now when mustering a boarding patrol for the adeptus sororitas all order units in your boarding patrol must be from the same order so you can't have mixed orders uh you can include cult imperialis units and you can include up to three character models, but only one of these may have a wounds characteristic of five or more. Generally, this means you can have a couple of like preachers around, you know, something like a canoness. The one exception to this is FRL Stern and Kaiganel. Uh, you can still be both included, even though both models have a wounds characteristic of five or more. So you can still include that cool named character. Now you can include a Sister Repentia unit so long as their size of the unit is either 4 or 9. And you can include an Acroflagellant unit in your army so long as it is either 3, 5 or 10 models strong. Now you can include one fast attack slot in an Adeptus Sororitas Force but only if that unit is a Dominion Squad. You cannot include the Triumph of St. Catherine. There's no way people are taking that on board a boarding action. And models in your boarding party cannot be given the Rapturous Blows Blessing of the Faithful. Lastly, when forming boarding squads, if a Sisters Repentia unit has a size of 9, split the unit into one containing 4 and another containing 5. Normally, you're splitting you know, 10 model units into 5s, uh, but with Repentia, obviously, they don't have that even amount. Rules adaption-wise, Adeptus Sororus are pretty easy. There are no rules adaption. They play their army exactly as they would in regular Warhammer 40k. And so, where do we begin? I think a Cannoness for me is the perfect place to start. Now, the Cannoness has Weapon Skill, Blitz Skill 2+, plus, Strength and Toughness 3, 5 wounds for 4 attacks. This means she is, you know, our one character that would have 5 or more wounds. She's got a variety of different weapon options available to them, uh, from, you know, a standard Chainsword, Power Sword, or her special sort of weapon, which is the Blessed Blade. Melee, plus 2 Strength, minus 3 AP, damage 2. Uh, and then she's got the Brazier of Holy Fire as well, a different shooting weapon she can use for Assault D6, uh, one use only. And each time an attack is made with this weapon, the attack automatically hits the target. And on an unmodified wound of a 4 plus, or 2 plus, if the target contains any demons, the target suffers a mortal wound and the attack sequence ends. She can also take Condemned Bolt Guns, which have the cool Condemn Stake, which are really good at taking out Psychers, uh, and you know, Plasma Pistols besides. Now she can take the Rod of Office where in your command phase you can select a friendly order core or order character within 12 inch and until the end of your next command phase uh, each time a model in that unit makes an attack you can re-roll a hit roll of 1 but she does also have a basic aura where a friendly order core unit while it's within 6 inch of her gets those re-rolls to 1 as well so she has it you know, nice near or she can take the Rod of Office to potentially pass it out to a unit further away. Now, if we're looking for a unit to support her, I think Celestian Sacrosancts are my favourite unit. Combat units really come into their own in Boarding Patrol, where everything's nice and tight. So, Celestian Sacrosancts, they have the options for two main power weapons, which are the Anointed Halberd for plus 3 strength, minus 3 AP, damage 1, or the Hallowed Mace for plus 2 strength, minus 1 AP, damage 2. You can also choose on the Sergeant to get that Spear of the Faithful in there as well, which is pretty cool, uh, which is a nice plus 3 strength, minus 3 AP damage too, so the best of both worlds, really. Now, you've got some cool rules. First of all, you've got the Bodyguard rule, where while a friendly sanctified character or order character is within 3 inch, that character can use the Lookout Sir, even if this unit has 3 or less models. You've got a 4 up invulnerable to save, thanks to the Sacrosanct Shields. And the Keepers of the Faith ability is they're eligible to perform Heroic Intervention, as if they were a character, which is pretty darn cool. So they work really nice protecting your character in those boarding patrols while also being a pretty solid combat unit in their own right. 
And so, where to next though after those first few initial purchases? I think a Battle Sister Squad for me is a great place. This is going to give you a good mix of different bits and pieces to your force. It's going to give you a nice little bit of shooting with their bolt guns. It's going to give you the option to take another power weapon on, say, the sergeant. You're going to get some heavy weapons in there as well. You can take heavy flamers or even special weapons, like your Minister and Flamers and all of that on the squad. They're just a solid, well-rounded unit. You can take five or ten model units. I think this is just a nice place to go, giving you a troop choice, giving you something cheaper, bringing more models to the table than some of your other options. Now, if we start to go back to elites and maybe look at another unit we can bring in that's going to be another combat for focused unit is the acro flagellants i really like these models first of all they have the zealot rule which is really cool so each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack if that unit made a charge move was charged or performed heroic intervention they can re-roll their hit rolls the echolestri battle conclave is you can include them for free if you've got a battle priest but we likely won't in this list but berserk killing machines you can each time they lose a wound roll a d6 and a five plus they don't lose it but they can't perform any actions either they do have the acro flails which are pretty cool uh this means they're going to be plus one strength minus one ap damage one putting out three attacks uh well putting out four attacks per model because you get to hit twice with each one of these so pretty nice and then you can give an enduring implants to a unit model if you want where the attacks characteristic of three and strength characteristic of five instead now, the Dominion Squad is the fast attack option we can bring into the unit. Normally, this squad is something you put in a Rhino and move your Flamers up, but it is a unit that can take a whole bunch of special weapons. Up to four Dominions can replace a weapon from the special weapons list. We can be Arctic Faster Crafted Storm Boulders, Melted Guns, or Minister and Flamers. For me, in the close confines, it just makes sense to go with all the Flamers. You can take the Incensor Cherub on the unit as well, uh, or you can choose to take some pistols and a power weapon once again on your Sergeant. Now that big thing is the Holy Vanguard ability where at the start of the first battle round before the first turn begins, this unit can make a normal move of up to 6 inch as if it were your movement phase though it must end 9 inch away from enemy any units. And lastly, the other unit I want to talk about is the Sisters Novitiate. Now I really like this. This is the Kill Team style Sisters of Battle unit but they've got some cool rules that I think really go nicely in a boarding assault. So you can take Sacred Banners to give them rerolls to advance and charge rolls. You can have the Simiracle Imperialis, so once per phase they can perform an act of faith, even if an army unit from your army has already performed an act of faith during this turn. And then they've also got other abilities like Impetuous Fervor, where if they've made a charge move, uh, they can add one to their attacks. And yeah, they're just a nice solid unit that can pack out a decent amount of combat for a pretty cheap cost. And so here we have our sample army list, a perfect 500 points for our boarding patrol force. We've gone for the Order of the Bloody Rose. I think this is a really nice one for playing in your boarding actions. So each time a unit with this conviction fights, if it made a charge move, was charged, or performed heroic intervention, then until that fight is resolved, you can add one to the attacks characteristic of models in the unit. This is really nice, uh, stacking with some of the units already, so getting quite a few attacks out of them. Each time a model in this conviction makes a melee attack as well, if that model's unit made a charge, was charged, or performed heroic intervention, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that weapon by one as well. So, really good, some combat benefits, exactly what we're looking for. Now, we've got a Canoness who's going to be our Warlord, and she's got a Chainsaw. The reason for this is we're going to take the Order of the Bloody Rose Relic called beneficence now what this does is it's a melee weapon plus two strength minus two ap damage one but each time the bearer fights they add three additional attacks if there are six or more enemy models within three inch of them though they add d3 plus three attacks so really good at just chopping into hordes on top of this we've gone for the warlord trait blazing ire another one specific to the order of the bloody rose giving the warlord plus one attack and this warlord is also eligible to charge in a turn in which they advanced for troops, we've got two squads. So we've got a squad of five battle sisters with incensor cherub in there. The sister superior has a hand flame and power sword. And then we've got the simiraculum imperius and a ministorum heavy flamer in the squad as well. We've got the sisters navidiot squad able to be taken because we have taken that battle sister squad. You still can't have more navidiate squads than you have battle sister squads. So you have to have one for one. Now, we've gone giving all the Nividiates, all of them that don't have anything special, we'll be having the Nividiate melee weapons. Uh, we've then got a minute, two Ministorum Flamers, Sacred Banner, and the Simiracrum Imperialis. 
And then our Novidiot Superior has a Plasma Pistol and Power Sword. For elites, we've got our Celestian Sacrosancts. We have the Sergeant with a Ministorum Hand Flamer and the Spear of the Faithful. And a unit of five Acroflagellants, one of them upgraded with the Endurant Implants. A fast attack choice, thanks to being able to take a Dominion Squad with the Sisters of Battle Changes. Uh, we have four Ministorum Flamers and a Ministorum Hand Flamer and Power Sword on the Sergeant there. All in all, a ton of flame weapons, some stronger weapons, some nice combat units, and a decent bit of shooting. This should be a really nice, well-rounded assisted of Battle Force for your boarding actions. If you've got some ideas on what you're planning to run for boarding actions with the Adeptus Sororitas with the Sisters of Battle, let us know down in the comments below. And so that is the end of the video. We hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our little community here at Sinful Gaming, we have a Discord server which is linked down in the video's description. Also, down in the video's description are the best ways to help support the channel via Patreon and YouTube members or by grabbing some merch from either Kofi or Teespring. All of these are the best ways to help support the channel and it means the world to us that people do choose to help support us. Now, as a special thank you to everyone who supports the channel via Patreon and YouTube members, we'd like to give you all a shout out. So, thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lowell, Alderon Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Q Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domia, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Bloobs, Benjamin Swallows, Red Martin, Kevin Bowman, Iron Grinch, and Nuffs. And to our YouTube members, Greenridge Gaming, Ronya Lock Lorick, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, John Castle, Davis Weir, James South, Dave Crozier, Dylan Arino, and James Tillman. And lastly, a special thank you to Lady Witchfox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for the channel you can see here. Uh, and indeed, pick up the stickers of the amazing artwork or the amazing artwork on our merch as well if you want to. But thank you once again, everyone, and a special thanks as well to everyone who helps support the channel and to all those who come and help with the channel, be the people that come and do battle reports or indeed those that are managing our Discord server. Thank you all once again, everyone. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the great. Ciao for now.